Hi, this is Kelsey Fukowski for AP Gov Review. And in Unit 2 of Part 1, we're going to be looking at public opinion and political action for this next unit, the AP Gov exam for United States government and politics. So let's get started. First off, talking about political culture. By definition, this is a distinctive and pattern way of thinking about how political and economic life ought to be carried out. Every country has its own unique political culture. Certainly, there's going to be overlap. However, there are going to be certain tenets that might be stronger than others. Others may be uh, weaker when compared to one another. It only makes sense. Now, Americans, generally speaking, do believe in more political equality. For example, everybody should have the right to vote. That is political equality. However, where Americans diverge on equality, they think the equality should only pertain to politics in the sense that, again, you have the right to vote, but not so much economic equality. There's a very strong reaction against socialism and, and communism, uh, any one of those elements coming into American culture. So, for example, the belief that everybody should make a certain amount of money or that college should be paid for, that's where Americans are going to diverge as opposed to Scandinavian countries, which in their political country, they have more stronger beliefs about economic equality. When we look specifically in the United States, amongst the major tenets of, of American political culture include liberty, and that of course is no surprise as we've seen that in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and so forth. Egalitarianism, the idea of political and economic equality, and I put economic equality in the sense that you have the opportunity to advance oneself, not necessarily in terms of everybody gets health care or everybody's college gets paid for. That's a little bit different, but just the idea that that opportunity exists. Um, individualism, and that's really where the economic component comes in, with the belief that people can and should get ahead on their own. So, for example, you work really hard if you're an immigrant and you're going to better your life and for your children in the future. So there's really that pull yourself up from your bootstraps belief that's sort of ingrained into the American psyche. Also, you have a civic duty, the idea that taking community affairs is very important, whether that's voting, whether that's volunteering, and then also democracy and populism, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So the people are dominating democracy. Now, what's really interesting, as I mentioned before, about economic equality, when they uh, put out a poll, and you see the statement right here on your left-hand side, the statement was, it is government's responsibility to take care of the very poor who can't take care of themselves. Well, the percentage of those agreeing in the United States was a mere 23%. Yet in European nations, you see at a minimum in Germany, which is somewhat of an economically conservative country, 50% agreed, even higher in Italy, uh, Great Britain, and France. Now, when we have this idea of hard work guarantees success, it's no surprise that 63% of Americans agreed with that, while these European countries tend to not fully agree. And again, it goes back to this idea of individualism. So you might see a question on that on the AP Gov exam, this particular to this unit, where the United States is different from European countries in that it stresses individualism, not economic equality. Very, very important to really understand that. So what do polls reveal about Americans' political information? How much do they know? If you've ever seen an episode of Jay Leno back in the day, he had a segment called Jay Walking, in which he would ask random bystanders political questions. Who's running for president? Uh, can you name the vice president? And oftentimes, and this of course probably was selectively edited, people really had no idea or they'd give some absurd answer. But what the polls do you know, show when they are scientifically surveyed is that many people do not really know much about politics aside from the obvious. Part of that, you know, comes from a lack of education. Schools certainly are not as focused on civics as they once were. And you also see a lack of political engagement, especially at the college level. So, I mean, people typically think that college students are politically active, but that has certainly gone down as we saw and discussed in Unit 1. What's also interesting is that since 1964, Trust in government has declined. You will probably see a question on the AP Gov exam that's going to ask you about Americans' trust in government. 
think back to U.S. history. What was happening in the 1960s? Well, certainly you had the Vietnam War. You're going to have Watergate eventually, and this is going to lead about to two-thirds. I mean, that's a high percentage of Americans who distrust their government. And if you see in this political cartoon, the survey finds growing, and you see Uncle Sam behind there peering in to the newspaper, uh, uh, distrust in government. So not a huge surprise there. What is interesting is that trust actually in the government had actually gone up uh, somewhat uh, following the events of September 11th, but have since then declined with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But overall, Americans since 1964 really don't have that much trust in their government. Prior to that point, you actually had a substantial amount. I mean, we're talking 67 70% who actually you know, did trust their government as indicated uh, by this chart here in front of you. So certainly this has gone down over time. Again, reasons for the increase since the 1950s in the mistrust of government, more specifically uh, tanks in the 60s. But you have, of course, the Watergate scandal. You have uh, issues with the Vietnam War. And then you also have you know, things with uh, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky with the whole sex scandal in the White House. That's going to erode the trust of Americans. So political uh, or public attitudes toward the scope of government, again, many people actually don't have an opinion about the scope of government. They may not even give it much thought as to what should the role of government be. Should it be more involved in people's everyday life or should it be, you know, somewhat, you know, distant? So public opinion has been inconsistent over the years, so this can lead to policy gridlock, uh, which you really have almost a stalemate in a way. Um, also keep in mind that Americans, when selecting leaders, tend to be swayed by performance rather than policy. And you see that a lot, especially with candidates. You know, they might speak in these grandiose terms. They might promise you these wonderful things. Uh, and people are swayed by that. And again, are you running for president? Are you running for being a congressperson? Or are you, you know, running for popularity? You know, and what are you choosing those people for? It's interesting is that when you look at a majority of people who are elected to office, they tend to not be bad looking people, right? I mean, believe it or not, we hope to say that we're not going to vote for somebody just because of how they look, but appearances certainly matter. So again, this somewhat is disconcerting that, you know, you're focusing more on really their performance and their day to day appearance as opposed to you know, looking at what the policies that, that, that he or she wants to carry out. Nevertheless, when we look at disengagement, the political disengagement of college students today is somewhat low. Um, and certainly during presidential elections, 2008, 2012, 2016, you see college students being a little bit more involved. However, you know, since the 60s, you notice that probably close to about 60% we're up to date with political affairs, yet now it's down to about 37%. That's going back about 2007. But nevertheless, it has gone down. You don't really see active engagements like you once did. Now, when we look at age and political knowledge, back in 1964, people in their 30 to 44 age bracket actually had the most amount of political knowledge. Yet, that's back in 1964. In 2004 today, it's actually older people who have the bulk of political knowledge. Also look at how low this was. I mean, you had about 35% of people under 30 having some type of political knowledge. Yet back in 1964, that amount was about 65%. So times have certainly changed in that regard in terms of who has the you know, most amount of political knowledge. So it's not really the younger people. You've seen actually a drop. Now, when you measure political opinion and political information here, uh, when you look at just knowledge of geography, something very basic, Sweden comes in at 79%, yet the United States comes down at 46%. And again, this is indicative of limited political knowledge, limited grasp of international affairs and politics, and that is sort of the trend there. So we're going to end here, and the next video will continue on with more information about political opinion and demographics.